Welcome to the Unapologetic Mompreneur, the podcast for mums with an online business who are ready to take back their time, home, business and self so they can restore the balance and thrive both at home and at work without feeling like they have to choose between the two. I'm your host, Sarah Dew, life and biz coach for mumpreneurs. I'm also a mum, stepmom, wife, introvert, breast cancer survivor and your mentor for making a change for the better. I've learned how to go from surviving to thriving and unapologetically create a business I love and the life I want for me and my family without worrying about what other people think. And now I'm here to help you do the same. Because being an unapologetic mumpreneur doesn't mean that we're selfish or that we don't care about others. It simply means that we are not afraid to show up as our true authentic selves, to step into our purpose, do what we know is right for ourselves and the ones we love, and take the steps we need to take to make our dream life and business a reality. Join me each week where I'll be sharing all of my best tips and strategies, plus the occasional dose of tough but gentle love to help you feel empowered, motivated and confident to take action so that you can become the mum, wife, biz owner and woman you know you are meant and deserve to be. So are you ready to unapologetically create a business and life you love? Let's do this. Hey there, and welcome to episode 48 of the Unapologetic Mumpreneur podcast. As a recovering perfectionist, I have learned the hard way that rather than being a badge of honor, my perfectionism and my perfectionist streak has actually been harming my business. In episode 46, I shared the different ways that perfectionism was harming me and my business, and how if you are struggling with perfectionism and you have that perfectionist streak in you, how it is harming you and your business too. And so if you haven't listened to that episode yet, I highly recommend that you go and give it a listen because it is truly, truly shocking. When you see the ways that perfectionism is holding you back and stopping you from accomplishing your goals and seeing the success that you know that you deserve in your business, it gives you the encouragement and the support that you need to know that it is okay to aim for done is better than perfect and to strive for progress over perfection. That episode, as shocking as it is, is really quite freeing to know that actually, if this perfectionist streak in me, if this perfectionism is really holding me back in all of these ways, it's okay for me to strive to be and do things a little bit less perfect. In that episode, I also promised you that I would share with you how I have learned to push past and manage that need for everything in my life and in my business to be perfect. I promised you that I would share the tools, the tips and the strategies that I now have up my sleeve after lots of years of road testing and trial and error, the different strategies and things up my sleeve and the things that I have in my armory that help me recognize when perfectionism is raising its ugly head, why it is doing it at that moment in time of what is going on, of why I'm holding myself back, why I'm wanting things to be perfect. And then how to push past it so that I can keep going and get my stuff out there in the world because I know that it's going to help somebody. And that is what this episode is all about. If you struggle with perfectionism and you know that it is holding you back too, but you have no idea how to push past it, this episode is for you. I'm going to help you by sharing some strategies that I use and the strategies that I share with my coaching clients so that you can get started on your journey to overcoming perfectionism. So are you ready to start ditching that need for everything to be perfect so that you can go from surviving to thriving in your business? I have got you and I'm gonna help you make it happen because if I can do this too, trust me then I say that you can and I have got your back. So let's do this together. The first thing I want you to do is to give yourself some grace, to give yourself a hug, and tell yourself that it is okay. This perfectionism and this perfectionist streak is so, so, so unbelievably common. I have seen it in 99.9% of all of my clients. And as you know, and I've mentioned it before, and if you have listened to episode 46, you'll know that it is something that I have struggled with so much and it has held me back in my business for more years than I can tell you. 
I have learned the hard way that it is not a badge of honor, that it has been holding me back. And whilst I used to feel proud about being a perfectionist, and I used to think that it was a badge of honor, that it was a good thing. And yes, in some ways it can be because it shows that you have pride and that you have standards and that you want to do things well and you want to do things to a good standard. It can go too far. And it can stop us and hold us back and it can make us feel like we are never going to put anything out there because it's never going to be good enough. And that is dangerous. That is what is going to damage you and your business. That is going to harm you and your business. And that is what is going to stop you from getting to where you want to be and seeing the success that you deserve. But I want you to know that it's perfectly normal to feel that way and to want to have that. And it's super common and you are not alone. So I want you to give yourself a hug and embrace the fact and just accept that you have that in you, but that is a good thing. And I'm going to also help you how to tell it back so that you can do things, so that you can have the confidence to put things out there, to do the things that you want to do in your business and know that it's okay to put it out there if it's not perfect, that it's okay to put it out there if it has typos. That it's okay to put it out there and you're thinking you could have written that graphic, you could have written that paragraph better, that you could have chosen a better photograph for your blog post, that you could have laid it out better in Canva, whatever it is that you are working on. These strategies I'm going to be sharing with you in this episode are going to help you do those things, to know that it is okay to put B minus work out there, that everything doesn't have to be A plus plus plus, and that it is okay to put your stuff out there in the world because you know that you are called to do this and that you can help people and that this perfectionist streak is not going to hold you back, that you are going to learn how to manage it, how to recognize when it's raising its head. But for the moment, first off, give yourself some grace, give yourself a hug, tell yourself that you are not alone and together we are going to nail it. So that is step number one. I just want to give you to give yourself some grace. Okay, next up is I want you to start every single day fresh. Every day is a brand new day. And so rather than dwelling on the mistakes that you may have made yesterday, the things that you didn't get done, or that whatever didn't go to plan or didn't go right, I want you to start each day as if it is new and fresh and that no other days have happened. Because this will free you from the stress that comes from undone to-do lists and past mistakes. Each morning, before you even get out of bed, take some deep breaths, focus on the day ahead, and set the intention to start it anew. Don't start worrying about what you didn't accomplish yesterday and that you need to play catch up or that you need to go and jig things around or it's not quite right. Focus on today being a brand new day. Do not worry about anything that didn't go right yesterday, any past mistakes that you've had, any undone to-do lists. Set the intention to start the day afresh and anew. This will free you up so that you can go into your work and into your job, your tasks, knowing that you are just going to get going, that it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Instead of thinking about what didn't go right and what didn't go to plan, you can focus on the task at hand and just get going. And then at the end of the day, I want you to take a few more deep breaths before you go to sleep and let everything that happened in the day fall away. Know that the day is done. You've done what you can. Let it float away knowing that tomorrow is another brand new day. This really, really helps you break out of that cycle of constantly beating yourself up because things aren't perfect, that things didn't go to plan, that you didn't accomplish what you had on your to-do list, that you could have done something better. Know that it is okay and that each day is a new Start each day fresh and you will be surprised at just how much freer you feel and how much less pressure you are putting on yourself to get everything done and to get everything perfect and to not make mistakes. It really, really does help. Okay, next up, I want you to focus on the process, not the results. Because having goals is great, but it's not all about hitting that finishing line. Because the process is just as important as the end result. All of that learning and all of that growth that occurs while you are striving to reach the goal, that matters too. Whenever you find yourself being fixated on the end result, try redirecting your mind back to the process. 
focus on the effort that you are putting in instead of the results that you are hoping to achieve. And you will go further than you could ever imagine. Because when we are constantly focusing on that finishing line, we are putting that pressure on ourselves to hit it, to keep going, to not fall at the last hurdle. And it can be really, really tough on ourselves. It goes back to having those higher, unrealistic, unattainable goals. And we're just pushing ourselves and pushing ourselves. And that is when we get overwhelmed. But if we are just focusing on the effort we're putting in, and then we are focusing on the process and the steps that we are taking, that's when it becomes less overwhelming. Because each time we take another one of those baby steps closer to that goal, we are getting closer to the goal. Instead of looking at this big end result that seems miles away and impossible for us to accomplish when we're trying to make everything perfect, breaking it down into tiny little baby steps and just focusing on one little thing at a time takes away so much of that pressure. So when you're working on a project, when you're working on a blog post, when you're working on creating a new piece of content or designing your next product or putting together your next service, focus on the process, not the results. Don't worry about hitting that finishing line when you're actually working on that thing. Just focus on what you are doing at that moment. And it really will help take away that pressure of wanting to get it done, of wanting to make it perfect, of wanting to have it finished and for it to just be perfect. It takes away all of that pressure and you can just concentrate on that little mini milestone and you will be amazed at how much easier it is for you to accomplish that goal without that pressure of everything having to be perfect. Okay, next is probably the hardest one for me. And if you are a recovering perfectionist like me, this is the one that you're going to struggle with the most, but it is the one that is going to make all of the difference. This is the one that is going to give you the confidence to do things, to put things out there and to just do it. And that is give yourself permission to put it out there, to do it, to hit that publish button, to hit that go button, to hit that launch button. Whatever it is that you are working on and you are trying to do and accomplish, give yourself permission to just go and do it and let it be crappy. It is okay to do B minus work and not A plus plus plus. It took me a long time to allow myself to do this, but it is the only way that you are going to grow. It is the only way that you are going to see the success you want. You have to put the stuff out there. I talked about in episode 46 how I just would not hit publish on things. That I in the early days I had a ton of blog posts, I had a ton of emails written of all sorts of things that I had created, of new freebies that I created. And I just felt that they weren't good enough. And so I didn't publish them. But by doing, by not doing that, by not putting them out there, I was not getting new subscribers. I was not getting traffic to my website because I hadn't put that stuff out there. So how on earth was I supposed to grow? It was super, super hard lesson for me to learn, but I had to learn that lesson that I had to just hit publish. I just had to hit that go button and just put it out there, even if I didn't feel it was perfect. But you know what the best thing about the internet and the best thing about having an online business is that we can go back and change things later. And it is how we grow and how we learn and how we get better and better and better. If I look back to some of my early days of my blog posts, They are so embarrassing, so, so embarrassing. I look at them and just think, what was I talking about? That was crap. But it's okay because I put it out there. And by putting it out there, I learned and I honed my skills. I honed what I was working on and I got better. I wasn't perfect right from the start. We are never perfect at anything. We don't master anything the very first time we do it. We don't just get in a car and suddenly we can be driving and we're the best driver on the planet. As a toddler, we don't just suddenly stand up and start running a marathon. We have to learn and we have to learn crappy. We have to get up and stumble and fall and pick ourselves back up again. That is how we learn. And so the only way you're going to learn and the only way you're going to grow and the only way you're going to get better is to give yourself permission to put your crappy stuff out there because it is going to be crappy to start with. And that is okay. You will refine it over time. You will get better. You will learn new ways of doing things. But you're not going to do that if you don't hit publish, if you don't hit go. 
So I want you to give yourself permission to put stuff out there. Yes, it's scary. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to have those butterflies and that eek feeling of your finger hovering over the mouse of do you hit publish, don't you hit publish, do you hit publish, don't you hit publish, do you share that post, don't you share that post. I know what that is like. I have been there with that sweaty palm, sweaty butt crap moments because it's terrifying of putting that stuff out there and what if people think it's crap. But it's okay because if you don't do that, you are not going to grow. So this is the biggest tip of all, is to give yourself permission to put stuff out there. Practice putting stuff out there that is a little bit less than what you would normally do as perfect. Practice allowing yourself to hit publish on those typos, to do the things, because yes, it's scary, but nobody else is going to notice. They are looking to you for the expert advice that you can share with them, with the gifts that you have to share, the way that you can help them make their lives better. That is what they are looking for. They don't care that you've got a typo. They don't care that the picture that you feel you've chosen wasn't good enough. They're not even looking at that. And actually, they may even think that that was a great graphic to go with the paragraph that you've just shared. How do you know? Put the stuff out there. Give yourself permission to do less than perfect work and put it out there Because that is how you will learn, that is how you will grow, and that is how you will refine what you are doing. I promise you. Okay, and so if that one wasn't scary enough for the recovering perfectionist in yourself, I promise you've got this because if I can do that, you can too. But if that wasn't scary enough, I have another one that is going to stretch you a little bit more. It is going to really help you dip your toes into the water and help you to gain more confidence and trust yourself that what you are doing, it really is good enough. And that is to try new things. I know from experience that the drive to be perfect all the time can make it hard for us to try new things, especially if we think we're not going to be able to get it right or be perfect at it from the start. But the best way to overcome this problem is not to avoid trying new things. It's to do the opposite. It is to try new things more often. So I want you to make it a habit to try several new things a month. Start small if you like. It doesn't have to be anything huge. But try and build into your working week something at least once a week that you are trying that is brand new. Because this will accustom your mind to being a beginner and help you get out of the habit of expecting perfection and excellence the very first time you do something. Because that is what can really hold us back, especially when we're trying something new that we haven't done before. And if any of you are like me and it's something tech related and I can't get it right, it freaks me out and I want to run away and I want to throw in the towel and forget about it. And I'm not going to work on it because I don't know how to do it. And that causes my perfectionist streak to raise its head because if I can't get it right from the start, There's no point in me doing it. But actually, then that thing is never going to happen. And the only way to overcome this is to constantly try new things, to do and try and give yourself permission to be a beginner. You don't have to be perfect at everything. It's impossible for us to be perfect at everything. It's actually okay to be a beginner because that is how we learn. And actually, those beginnings, they can be pretty exciting because you never know where it is going to take you. I wanted so long to speak at summits, but I was terrified because I would always think that everybody else was better than me, that they were all seasoned speakers. Even though before I had my business, I had spoken on stage to more than 400 people on several occasions and delivered live trainings and delivered retreat weekends, running workshops. But I still felt that I wasn't good enough to be a part of a summit. And so I didn't do it for years, but then I decided that it was enough. And then I was going to embrace being a beginner with this. And I allowed myself to dip my toes in the water, knowing that my first session was probably going to be crappy, but that was okay because the next one and the next one and the next one, they would just get better and better and better. And now in the last 18 months, I have spoken at so many summits and I absolutely love them. I have gone from hiding behind a screen presentation with no video to now actually having one-on-one live video interviews and talking with the host and joining in on the live speaker panels. 
I would never have done that before because I would have thought I couldn't have done it perfect if I didn't embrace being a beginner and allowing myself to mess up, to make mistakes and to practice and learn and grow. And so I want you to start giving yourself permission to try new things, to allow yourself to be a beginner and to make it a habit to try several new things a month. This will accustom your mind to being a beginner and help you get out of that habit of expecting perfection and excellence the first time you do something. It is super, super powerful. And then you will find the confidence when something new comes your way, instead of worrying about whether it's going to be perfect and say no to it, that you can say, actually, it's okay. I can be a beginner at this. I'm going to give it a go. It could be fun. And who knows where it's going to take me. So that is the next thing I want you to do is to try new things. And then finally, last but not least, is to reward yourself. Because we all love a little treat now and then. And in actual fact, our brains are wired to respond to those rewards. And the more immediate and the more desired, the better. And so use this to your advantage because you should always be celebrating your wins anyway. Big or small, part of the goal setting process and part of going from goal setter to goal getter and crushing those goals, you need to and should be rewarding yourself for those accomplishments. But if you actually use that strategy to help you overcome your perfectionism, It's incredibly powerful and it works really, really well. So set rewards for yourself for doing or not doing specific behaviors. Make sure there's specific rewards that you love, that you have easy access to and that you can do right away. So every time you hit publish on a new post without making it perfect, every time you send a new email to your subscribers, every time you hit publish on that Instagram post, Every time you hit go and launch on your new workshop or your new masterclass or your new coaching program, whatever it is, every time you do that and you push past that need to have something perfect or you're playing in Canva for three hours that you say, actually, come on, enough is enough now. This is good enough. This is as good as it needs to be for this thing right now. I'm going to download this and I'm going to put it out there. Every time you do that, reward yourself pick something and do something that you can give yourself that immediate hit that immediate thing that is rewarding you for pushing past that perfectionist streak for rewarding you for going for done is better than perfect for rewarding you for striving for progress over perfection every time you do that reward yourself clap yourself on the back give yourself a hug do yourself a five a high five Do a happy dance and then do something that is going to reward you to give you that dopamine pit to show you that you are on the right track. Because every time you do that, every time you reward yourself, you are showing yourself that you have got this, that it is okay, that it is okay to put less than perfect work out there, that done is better than perfect. My personal favorites of rewarding myself, French Bulldog videos on Instagram because I have two Frenchies and I just cannot resist watching all of those videos. They crack me up every time, they make me smile and they're a great little reward. So anytime I combat that perfectionism and I do something that is B minus and not A plus plus plus, I give myself a high five, I do a happy dance and I tell myself, you have got this girl and I spend a couple of minutes watching French Bulldog videos. The other thing I do is I have a bar of chocolate in my desk drawer. From Hotel Chocolat, my favorite my favorite chocolate shop in the whole world, I have a bar of that in my drawer. And any time that I do that and I push past that perfectionist streak, I indulge in a couple of squares of chocolate and it makes me feel amazing. And it just makes me want to do stuff even more. Every time I do something that is a beginner and I dip my toes and do something I haven't done before and allow myself to be a beginner, I have another square of chocolate. I may not be great for my waistline, but it works. It really, really does work. So I want you to reward yourself every time you put something out there that you feel is less than perfect, but you've given yourself the permission to do it. Clap yourself on the back and tell yourself you have just taken another step closer to recovering on your perfectionist journey. It really does work. Use these strategies and have them up your sleeve and in your arsenal. Use them any time that you need to and you feel like that perfectionist streak is raising its ugly head. When it does so, 
Ask yourself, what is going on? What are you working on? And what is it that you are afraid of? And why are you afraid of it not being perfect? If it's worrying about what other people think, forget that. People really don't pay as much attention to things as you think that they do. But if it is worrying about what other people think, I want you to go and listen to episode 21, where I share some strategies for worrying less about what other people think, how you can then keep going and put stuff out there without worrying or fear of judgment and owning your lane and doing the things that you know are right for you and your business. So if that is something, I want you to go and listen to episode 21 and you'll find the link for that one in the show notes. But you have got this. You can do this. Know that you are not alone in this perfectionism thing. We all struggle with it. And you know by now that I am a serious recovering perfectionist. And I don't think that being honest, I'm ever going to recover. And we will never recover from being a perfectionist because it is good. And it's human nature to have that tendency to want to do things well. But it also comes down to managing it to a point so that you have that balance where you are striving for good You are striving to do a good job and do things well, but not to the point where it is holding you back and it is controlling you and stopping you from thriving in your business. So here are the few strategies again. First, give yourself grace. Know that you are not alone and it is super common, but you have got this and you can learn to manage it. Then I want you to start each day fresh. Rather than dwelling on the mistakes you made yesterday, the things that you didn't get done or the bad things that happened, the undone to-do list and past mistakes, free yourself from that and treat each day new and afresh. And then at the end of the day, before you go to sleep, let everything happen in that day fall away, knowing that tomorrow is another fresh start. Then I want you to focus on the process, not the result. Remember that all of that learning and the growth occurs while you are striving to reach the goal, not about hitting that finish line. Focus on the effort you're putting in instead of the results you're hoping to achieve, and you'll find it so much easier to push past that perfectionist streak. Then give yourself permission to put the stuff out there because you are not going to grow. You are not going to get your dream clients. You are not going to get the income that you want. You're not going to get that time freedom that you are seeking and the success that you know you deserve in your business unless you put the stuff out there. You have to hit publish on it, knowing that done is better than perfect and that you are, every time you're doing that, you are working towards progress instead of perfection. And then embrace being a beginner. Try new things. Give yourself permission to be a beginner. Trying new more things more often. Make it a habit and add it to your calendar. Do several new things a month so that you can accustom your mind to being a beginner and help you get out of that habit of expecting perfection and excellence the very first time you do something. And then finally, make sure you reward yourself every time you do something that is not A++ and you put it out there, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a high five, do a happy dance and go and have that piece of chocolate because I promise you, That is showing you that you have got this and that is showing you that you have just taken another step closer to recovering on this journey of perfectionism. You have got this, but if you want any help and you want to work one-on-one and you want a little bit of extra support or you have any questions on making this happen, I am here for you. Send me a DM on Instagram over at the Unapologetic Mumpreneur and we can chat. I can help you through it. And if you want to, we can work together and I can be your accountability partner for this. Whatever you need, I am here for you. Know that if I can do this, you can too. You have got this. I am here with you every step of the way, cheering you on. And I look forward to chatting with you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you so much for joining me for another installment of the Unapologetic Mumpreneur podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. And if you have a moment, I would love for you to leave me a rating and a review so that other mumpreneurs can find this podcast too. Here's to unapologetically becoming the mum, wife, biz owner and woman you know you are meant and deserve to be. I can't wait to chat with you in the next episode. Bye for now.